Hi. <laughs> I was making sure I smile because I know you can see me when I'm calling. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Crystal. Today I want to talk about my experience with the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 3, or as I like to call it, the flippity flip. But before we get into all of it, let's go back in time a little bit to my day one with this device. You already know how excited I am for these boxes right here, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3 and the Z Flip 3. In today's video, we're gonna be focusing on the flippity flip, but stay tuned and subscribe for an upcoming video on all things about the Fold. And now my friends, I believe it is time to unbox her. We got this nice little box with the purple Z in the front, so I believe this is that beautiful lavender color. There it is. Oh my goodness, the purple though. I, I just will always love lavender. It is such a perfect color. Wow, oh, it's just, she's so beautiful. I am speechless. <laughs> Let's put you aside right now. What else is in the box? You know, the routine. Cable, USB-C, quick start guide, and this. <laughs> okay, that is it. Let's get to the fun stuff. The phone. Should I just, I haven't even, I haven't even flipped it yet. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, this already feels better than the previous flip. There's the little display and the big display. <laughs> Oh man, you know, I'm about this life. I'm just gonna crank the brightness all the way up to appreciate those beautiful OLED colors even more. Ooh, that nice smooth 120 Hertz. Already feel the smoothness. I feel like a big concern for people with foldables is how noticeable is that crease when you're using your phone or just watching something. And if you turn the phone around and the light is hitting it just right, you'll definitely see the reflection there. But if you're just straight up looking at it, it's barely there, especially on a lighter display. Let's play a video on here and check it out. This looks really good. It looks so good. So the display is looking on point. And now let's take our first Flip 3 selfie because the Z Flip is kind of the ultimate selfie taking device since you can do this and it acts like a built-in tripod and everything. So we have our little camera, hole punch camera up there, two on the back. And yes, this device does not have that in-display camera like the Fold 3, but I don't mind that at all, doesn't bother me. It's very neat at the top in the center there. This will be my first official picture right here. It is selfie time. Let's just do a regular, just regular handheld. We're not going fancy yet. There's a little pop-up that came up asking me for my selfie color tone. We got natural and bright. Definitely gonna stay natural. Let's do a wide. And we still got this little trick. I love that. I love being able to do that because then you can position the phone however you want. I also love that it highlights where the camera is when you do the hand gesture timer because it'll remind you to look at the camera and not the other stuff. Here's our first video clip on the Z Flip 3, the Flippity Flip 3. <laughs> How's it looking guys? Oh my gosh, the hands-free life though. It's so nice. You know, when you're holding your phone and selfie videos sometimes can be shaky, but I feel like this is almost an even steadier way of doing it. Like if you fold it and you're taking video because it just gives you more stability when you're holding it like this. Video looking good though. Let me know in the comments what it looks like for you guys. Okay, that was fun, but I think it's time to take this little guy outside to shoot some more photos and video and just see what it's like to live with the flip. So the beauty about having a phone like this is being able to do your own little mini photo shoots. Something I've been doing is just setting it on the ground and have it point up and take pictures of me because you can use the secondary display to see yourself and then you get the quality of the good cameras on the back, but you can still do like selfie style photos. So let's do that real quick. With all this like greenery, it should look cool. Let's see, look at the lines there.
You always have to smile before a duo call. <laughs> but how's my sweet 5G connection? It looks good. <laughs> and you look like I a potato like once again. I do. Oh no. I really like really doing this. Not. I'm just testing <laughs> some video calling, seeing how the quality looks. I wish I could see what it looks like. Well, I think when I press my screen big, like if it looks that clear. Okay, so safe to say I am loving this phone. And besides the fact that it folds in half, which is definitely the coolest thing about it, just the flexibility and the use that you get out of the cameras because of its foldability is by far what I love the most. The whole built-in tripod aspect of it makes me reimagine the way that I take smartphone photos. It's been so fun because of that. And also the phone is so well optimized for this too. When you're in the camera app with the phone folded like this, by default, your viewfinder will be on the top half of the display, camera toggles on the bottom. You can also flip-flop this, so whatever you're seeing moves to that bottom half. And on top of that, you can move everything to the cover screen at the same time or you can also just use the cover screen on its own. 10, nine, eight, uh, I think it took it. <laughs> Let's see, that kind of worked. Wow, pretty good. When it's closed like this, double tapping the power button will open up those rear cameras onto the cover display. And this little secondary display alone is reason to upgrade if you're coming from the previous flip, for me at least, because camera is always such a priority. And this little display really changes the way that you use those rear cameras. So here's the clip on the main wide lens. I'm gonna walk around for this one because I wanna see how it handles a walking and talking shot. Also the change of lighting. So we'll see how it does with that. This is really nice too, because the cover screen is AMOLED. So you're seeing yourself nice and bright. Even if you're outside, you're not gonna have any issues with using the cover screen. I feel like this is gonna be the perfect phone for vloggers. We got this beautiful fountain. We'll take some photos. And this is what's cool with this, because it's like its own little tripod. So I'm just gonna take it. I don't have to like really hold it. I can just position it. We got motion photo on. How about like a video clip like this? It was so nice to be able to take a device like this near a fountain where I did get it a little wet, but not have to worry about water damage. If it's raining or drizzling or you get a splash by a pool, no stress there because this is IPX8 water resistant, which is pretty wild in itself because there's a hinge here and somehow it can handle water pretty well, up to 1.5 meters of water for 30 minutes but I will not be trying that. <laughs> it can handle a lot pretty well actually because this device, even though it looks so sleek and slim and fragile, it's a lot more durable this time around. I mean, I straight up put it on top of rocks and hard surfaces outside where it can easily get scratched and scuffed and we're looking pretty good. A lot of the time I did take the safe route though because I put a case on it most of the time. But even before shooting this video, I dropped it from my couch and I mean, we're still looking good. No, no cracks or any scratches anywhere. There's tougher Gorilla Glass on here. There's a pre-installed screen protector too. So yeah, I'm not too worried about damaging this device or it getting cracked or scratched or anything.
Also, that reminds me, since we're talking about durability and all that, I love that I can throw this phone in my backpack or my purse and I don't have to worry about it being scratched because it folds in half. So I'm protecting that display in there. Seriously, like every phone that I've owned gets scratches on the display because of that because I throw it in with like keys in there and other things that can scratch a display easily. So yeah, not with this one. I guess I still have to worry about the cover display unless I find a way to protect that better. But I've definitely thrown this one in my bag and no scratches yet, so. <laughs> Besides the camera functionality with the cover display, you can use it for other things too, like scrolling through notifications, looking at the date, time, weather, calendar, starting a timer, all that fun stuff but it almost makes me wish that the cover display was a little bit bigger. Like if it took up more room in this top half of the back of the phone, then it would be that much more useful for the camera app. And also other things too, like maybe watching a quick video on the go or scrolling through Instagram and Twitter. Let's talk about the main display though, that beautiful 6.7 inch AMOLED 120 Hertz display. It makes everything that you're watching look so vibrant and colorful, but the more and more I used it, it was almost a little too vibrant. So I went into the display settings and I changed the screen mode to natural. By default, it's set to vivid, which is great if you're watching a lot of music videos, TV shows, movies, whatever, makes everything look great. But if you do a lot of photo and video editing, that natural setting might be a better tweak for you, so. Thankfully, you can always change that back and forth. Battery life has been solid too, with pretty much a full day of use for me with that 3300 milliamp hour battery. Some days I wish I had a little extra juice when I'm rocking full brightness for a long time, but thankfully there is up to 15 watt fast charging, which I definitely take advantage of when I go on my photo runs. <laughs> So I just got back from my run and I brought the Z Flip 3 with me. I put it in this lovely little Samsung case for the Flip 3, that beautiful sage green and purple combo though. This is such a great phone to run with. It passed the pocket test, my friends. It fits so nicely in my legging pockets. I didn't have to worry about it sliding out while I was sprinting, it just stayed in place. Also, I wanna point out, it's a very hot day today. Like straight up desert heat, almost 100 degrees out right now while I was running. And I was shooting a lot of photos and videos, probably for a little over 30 minutes in the direct sunlight. And the phone didn't overheat or stutter at all. It got a little hot, like hot to the touch, but it didn't affect my photo or video taking, so. Pretty happy with that. Real talk guys, I honestly didn't think I was gonna love this phone as much as I do, mainly because the last version felt incomplete to me. There was display issues, hardware issues. It was cool, but it wasn't fully there yet. And all in all, folding tech is still fairly new to the world, but I gotta say, if you're gonna try it out, this is it. This is the one to get. Yes, it is pricey, but it's not as pricey as foldables can get. Out of all the folding phones out there, as of right now, this is my favorite. Goodbye.